on November 9th, 2015, divers in South Africa noticed something weird. False Bay on the southwestern coast of South Africa was normally packed with seven gill sharks, with divers spotting up to 70 individuals in a single dive. But on November 9th, these sharks had disappeared overnight. Sometime later, several seven gill shark carcasses were found on the seabed with weird cuts on their body. But it was not until one year later, in 2016, when five more seven gill shark carcasses washed up on shore that scientists realized what had happened. All five sharks had pectoral tears and were missing their livers. The tears matched the ones on the photos of the sharks that had been found dead the year prior. And after the necropsis, they finally understood what had happened to these sharks. They found something they had missed before, orca teeth impressions. Orcas were already known to sometimes eat sharks, but this was the first record of orcas eating seven gill sharks in this area. And it was the first record of orcas tearing with almost surgical precision the pectoral area of the sharks just to eat the liver, leaving the rest of the shark behind. Orcas are divided in different ecotypes around the world, and each ecotype has their own distinct diet and hunting strategies. For example, resident orca populations mainly eat salmon, while big orcas specialize in hunting other marine mammals, with different communities specializing on different types of marine mammals. Many of you have probably seen that video of a group of orcas working together to create a wave that pushes a seal from the top of an ice pack into the water. This behavior is called wave washing, and to our knowledge, only one ecotype of orca out of the five existing in the southern ocean exhibits this behavior. Hunting strategies amongst orcas are most likely socially taught and passed down from generation to generation. That is why many consider orcas to have cultures, even though that is an ongoing debate because what is culture is also an ongoing debate. But it's still very impressive because until very recently, only humans were thought to have the social abilities to even have culture. So orcas are known to develop different hunting strategies depending on their prey. One year after the seven gill shark bodies appeared on shore, in 2017, five great whites also appeared washed up on shore, also without their livers. Great white sharks are commonly found in the waters around Cape Town hunting for seals, one of their primary food sources. In fact, the region is known for being one of the best places in the world to observe these magnificent animals in their natural habitat. They were always regarded as the region's ultimate apex predator, until now. When the great whites washed up on shore in 2017, scientists suspected that this might be the work of a pair of male orcas called Starboard and Port, who were known to live in the area. And their suspicions were confirmed last year. On May 16th last year, a hobbyist drone pilot followed three orcas with his drone. He filmed one of them pushing an estimated 3 meter long white shark to the surface while rolling it on its side. It is impossible to tell, but the shark already appeared to be dead. The orca then bit the shark in the region of the pectoral fins, after which one of the other orcas grabbed the shark's tail and disappeared underwater with it. No shark carcass was observed or recovered after this. None of these orcas were starboard or port, but they had both been filmed by the same person Person earlier swimming together with the other three orcas. In fact, some minutes earlier on the same day, Starboard was caught on camera by a tourist tour helicopter closely following a shark displaying evasive behaviors. It was also filmed together with some of the other orcas consuming what appears like a free-floating shark liver. From the filmed orca group, only Starboard and Port were identified because of their rare and characteristic banded dorsal fin. But not much is known about these two orcas. It is very unusual for two adult orca males to travel together. But molecular studies found preliminary evidence that they might be related and potentially even brothers, which could explain why they travel together. Some experts hypothesize that they are part of an ecotype of orca that frequents the open ocean and that for some reason decided to come closer to shore, maybe due to fishing depleting their normal normal food sources. But why they started this liver-eating behavior is unknown. One hypothesis is that this has to do with their teeth. Sharks have really rough skin. It's like sandpaper. And when orcas bite through it, it wears down their teeth over time. A white shark's liver is rich in calories and makes up to one third of its body weight. So these orcas might have learned that just by making a small tear near the liver, they can consume the liver, have a high energy and high calorie meal, and not really have to wear down their teeth. Their intelligence sure delivers. 
No. Whatever the reason for these attacks, these orcas do seem to be scaring away sharks from the region. After the events filmed on May the 16th, sharks evacuated the region for at least seven weeks. And in the past two years, barely any seven gill shark has been spotted in the area where there were previously hundreds. But orcas alone are not to blame. Being fished themselves or having their food fished away by people, shark populations around the world are in steep decline, with some of them coming dangerously close to extinction. Being attacked by orcas is now just an additional stress sharks in South Africa have to deal with. And still at the moment, there aren't many orcas specialized in eating shark or shark liver. However, if they teach it to more and more orcas and this behavior becomes more widespread, it can permanently change great white and seven gill sharks local distribution. These have been two of the main region's apex predators, and their displacement might have long-lasting effects in South Africa's marine ecosystems. This only goes to show how fickle the balance of nature is. But hey, there are people around the world trying to help shark populations rebound. Some of them are the people over at Dyer Island Conservation Trust. They do a great job in marine conservation and education in the area and have programs to protect local shark populations as well. So if you want to help them out, check out my description. This is not a sponsorship, by the way. They just do a great job and I want to support that. Also, I am lucky enough to be affiliated with Follow, who makes these beautiful bracelets. Follow creates animal-themed jewelry and then associates with organizations that aim to conserve said animals. And the organizations they associate with are legit and do really amazing and fantastic job in the field of conservation. And 10% of Follow's profits go to the conservation organizations. When you buy a bracelet with an animal, for example, if you buy a shark bracelet, you will also receive a card with information on how to track one specific shark. If you want to check them out and have 20% off any purchase, check out my link down below or use the code CNME20 at checkout. And of course, if you like the video, don't forget to like. If you want to watch more marine slash marine biology content, don't forget to subscribe. You can support me on Patreon, check out my merch store. Drawings were designed by me, my children's book. Everything is down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!